Welcome back to another reading and correcting with me, Kindar, the Tiger Rights, and Ty, the Tiger Supervisor. These are where I read a chapter from one of my stories and correct it as I go. If you want to listen to these live, it's every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time on Twitch. And if you are look looking to support me, that is on my Patreon. Today, we are doing a hot chapter 114 of Breaking Step, the last chapter of the book. Tibbs' concentration broke from the pain of his shoulder hitting the wall of the wagon, and he Okay. All right, this needs to be reworked. Ah. From the pain of his shoulder hitting the wall of the wagon, like there's a bunch of... Let, let, let's put this in order. Tibbs hit the wall. Focus concentration. This is no longer a And because of that, I don't need a comma here. Tibbs hit the wall and... Oh, actually, I do. You want it? Okay. Tibbs hit the wall and the pain that erupted from his shoulder broke his concentration. He stopped pulling in air, channeling earth as he stood so he could... Tibbs was sent off his feet again <clears throat> by the wagon, tipping back on its wheel, and he suffused himself with earth before he hit another wall and... Pain exploded from the impact, and his vision blurred. His essence was still within his reserve. He stayed on the floor, channeling purity and attempting to fuse himself, but he couldn't get it to move past his reserve's wall. His reserve wasn't full. It wasn't even half full, but that shouldn't matter. The walls weren't really walls, just how his mind thought of the... of how essence remained there instead of escaping as soon as he pulled it in. All he had to do was will it outside and outside of it, and nothing happened. The sound outside resolved himself into fighting as he applied a weave of purity to his head and shoulder. Then when then he could think then he could think clearly enough to be surprised that it, it had worked. The fighting was over quickly, the wagon's guard easily deal dealing with the bandits. He was surprised there were some this close to the town. They hadn't been traveling for that long. When the door darkened, Tip channeled water and made a sort of ice. It said jagged. Attempting to add metal to it only resulted in a thin strand of it from the small reserve which he moved to its to the edge. His will was all that that all he needed to make the, his weapon harder. The darkening, to, the darkening took on a purple coloring, and Tibbs realized it was corruption eating away at the door. How had bandits gotten their head on the vials of corrupt? Almost there. As muffled as the voice was, Tibbs thought he knew it. The guards are unconscious, an old demand said. Again, it was familiar, even if it sounded as if there was a wall of stone separating them instead of wood. Come on, a third man said, sounding exasperated. Why is this why is this taking so abyss long? I thought you were good at this. How about I stop? The first speaker replied, and you take over? Let's see just how quickly you get through the enchantments. It was the tone of the ban and the banter that placed who they were, and Tibbs was still staring in surprise when the door melted away to reveal a grinning dawn. Jekyll looked in. Don't just stand there, we need to go. Tibbs launched himself at the fighter, hugging him fiercely. You're okay. Of course I am. How could I mount a rescue otherwise? Right, Don drawled. Because you've been doing this alone. I thought Irdian would throw you in a cell when you left Stowe. Why would he? Jekyll asked, grinning. I was nowhere near the dungeon during all this time. The commander questioned each of us, Commodore said. But as we knew nothing of what you had 
done, he had to let us go. Did they use someone with light? Dibs asked Jackal, who shrugged. It was just me and him, along with a guard who escorted me, when they pulled me out of Crow's bed. He grinned. I don't think they expected to catch us having so much fun as we were having. As much fun as we were having. So you lied? His friend rolled his eyes. Of course I lied, Tibbs. And he believed you? Why wouldn't he? The guards at the door recognized you. They had to have been mistaken. If I'd been in the dungeon and didn't make it out before the door closed, I'd be dead. Everyone knows that. Mayhap it is best this conversation be had while we are once we are away, Commodore said, cutting off Tibbs' question and reminding him of the situation. I do not know how long the guards will remain unconscious. They are adventurer and may be able to. Their Epsilon, Tibbs said, surprised that there were only two of them, as well as the fact that he could sense to the front of the wagon and around them. His sense didn't seem affected by what had been done to him. Not much past their test. Then, while they should remain unconscious for some time, I nonetheless advise we leave, the click pointed sunrise ward. If we hurry, we can reach the forest before they awaken. Stop! Tips pulled his arm out of Jackal's grip as the fighter pulled on him. Pulled. Hmm. Yanked. Yanked his arm out of Jackal as the... Come back up. Uh, uh, there you are, pulled on him. What are you doing? All right, let's start. Stop! Tibbs yanked his arm out of Jackal's grip as the fighter pulled on him. What are you doing? Breaking you out? Breaking you out? Jackal grinned. What does it look like? It looks like the three of you are throwing your future away. Tibbs replied, where's Mez? He exchanged a look. We didn't tell him, Jekyll said. After we were questioned, Don continued, Mez laid into me, demanding to know if I knew what you were planning and how I could let you do something so childish. Unlike the commander, he didn't believe me when I said I had no idea what, what I, I would, when I said I had no idea this was going to happen, Jekyll shrugged. I just figured that since he had that girl trying so hard to be special to him, I wasn't going to. Good. Tibbs didn't need to hear more. Who knows you're here? Well, Crow, Jekyll said in a, I'm not an idiot tone. Don and Kumdar shook their head when Tibbs looked at them. Good. Then so long as you can get back into town without being seen, no one will know you were involved in this. Not happening. Jekyll stated, if you think I'm leaving you alone after what you had the dungeon do, you can forget it. Out, of, out there isn't like you are going back to Krosef, Tibbs told his friend. Jekyll rolled his eyes. Not happening. I am not going to be responsible for, you, for your man losing you. Come on, Tibbs. This isn't that. You promised him you'd stop doing stupid stuff. Rescuing you isn't stupid, Tibbs. You're my brother. Do you think I was going to leave you to leave them to do whatever they're planning on doing to you after at that citadel thing? You have rescued you. You've okay. You know what? You've rescued me. Tib stated. Now, I, now you can go back. You coming along is stupid. How can you say that? Because I have this. Tibbs pulled the sleeve up his left wrist and showed the utterly black band against his light brown skin. Just keep it covered, then. That's not how it works. They can follow it. Bardic told me it leaves something wherever it goes. If you stay with me, they'll find out and Krosef is going to lose you. That isn't happening, he yelled at, as Jackal opened his mouth. Kavdar studied him. Is this truly what you want? It was best. No, it isn't. Jekyll said, I don't abandon. You're going to pick Krosef over me, Tibbs told him. Tibbs! Jekyll's voice cracked. Tibbs breathed the frust his frustration down. He's your man, he said as gently as he, <laughs> as he could. I'm just your brother. You're not just... He's more important than I am. Jekyll tried to speak, then turned to the sorcerer. Don, how about you help me here? Tibbs looked at the sorcerer. Are you going to sacrifice the academy for me? Don, this is Tibbs. You can't seriously... Th Look, Jekyll. Don, Don, Don cut him off, Don Sharp. Unlike you, I'm not an adventurer. 
I went along with this because I knew you were going to be stupid and get caught if you tried it alone. But I can't run from the guild. They aren't going to let this go. They are never going to stop chasing Tibbs and anyone who helped him escape. We'd have to live in the wild and you're a runner, Jekyll said. How are you scared of any of that? I didn't want to be a runner, Don snapped. If I'd been given a choice, I'd have done whatever I could to go back to being a scholar once I was finally out of that cell. My future is in books, trying to figure out why things work the way they do, he caught his breath. And if Dibs had asked us to go with him, I, I don't know what I would have said. But he doesn't want us to. So I'm going back and I'll do everything I can for whomever, for whoever takes over from, from Tyranny to never notice me. As soon as I'm Epsilon, I will never leave the Academy. And you are, and you are going to spend yours with Krosef, Dibs said. Jekyll searches, search Tibbs' face. Don't do this to me, Tibbs. I'm doing it for you. Jekyll looked at the cleric. You aren't bound by the guild. You can go with him and make sure he's safe. I cannot. Jekyll glared at him. While you are correct that I am not bound to the guild, I am bound to others. You may have forgotten, but I, too, am not here of my own volition. I have a task to accomplish before I will be allowed to leave. Jekyll took a breath. Tibbs, you can't do this alone. Tibbs squeezed his friend's arm. I'll be okay. I'm a rogue. Well, I guess it's a thief. It's thief now. But I'm still the best at not getting caught. And I have tricks they don't know about. Do you? Don asked. I thought the process that put your the ban on stripped away your strength. I'm Upsilon. But I still know everything I learned. All I need to do is train and get stronger. The world's big. There's go So there's... So they are going, the world's bad. So there's, there's, there's going to be a lot of big and dangerous animals in it for me to fight and get stronger. But only if they don't catch you, the sorcerer said. Tip smiled. I have a couple of things I'm going to try that should help with that. He shook his head when Don opened his mouth. He wasn't saying what they were. Tibbs, Jekyll said. Jekyll pleaded, don't do this. Tibbs hugged him. It's how it has to be. You have to be here for your man. Tell him I'll be okay. Jekyll hugged him tightly when Tibbs pushed him away toward the town. Jekyll took a step back, eyes wet, before turning, squaring his shoulders and walking away. Tibbs, Don said, then hesitated. I did this, Tibbs said. I'm the only one who needs to deal with the consequences. You should have told me what you're planning. I know. You'd have told me Marjorie wasn't the right person to bring down the guild. Don's laugh was bitter. I'd have told you that isn't how the guild works. He sighed. Look, before you try something this stupid again, read up on the guild. Its history, how, it, how it's run. Then you'll understand just how impossible what you want is. You're saying I should just let them abuse people like the folks in Craggle Rock? Those like us who just made the mistake of trying to survive no matter how we had to do it? Of those like you who the world tried to crush? Tibbs, I know you want to help, but it's impossible. Tibbs, he smiled. When we got here, they said our job was to die. Only we didn't. They said it's impossible to have more than one element. That the dungeon's nothing more than a crafty animal. The guild knows so much stuff that isn't true that I'm not going to let the fact they think they're too big to be taken down stop me. Sebastian thought he was unbeatable, too. Be careful. Don walked away without looking back. Comdar studied him. I wish I could say that I will see you again one day, Tibbs, but I suspect this is the last time. You think I'm going to die? The cleric looked at the wagon, then ahead in the road. I... He shook his head, as if to clear it. What are you doing in Craggle Rock? Tibbs asked. I am no longer certain. The man forced a smile that didn't last. But I am nonetheless bound to finish it. If I wished, if, to finish it, if I wish to go on with my life. You don't have to keep going. We can all change things. I believe you know that is not always possible, Comdar said, tone sad. If you didn't, you wouldn't be, you would, if you didn't, you would 
you would change this course. You know there are a few options as to where it leads. He pointed Sunrise Ward again. Follow the morning sun for three days, and you will find yourself upon a camp. They are bandits, but they are not bad people. Tell them you need shelter from the forces of order, and they will help you as best they can. He took a step to turn and stopped. The cleric looked at the wagon again, then the road. I believe there is something you must know, Tibbs, although I do not know its meaning. This wagon was wrapped within a secret that unraveled when I incap incapacitated the drivers. They are not the cause, but they were its instrument, I believe. Be wary, whatever else you are. He walked off, leaving Tibbs alone with the wagon, two unconscious guards, and horses. The, the horses and the content of the bench that turned out to be a chest, a chest containing his armor. Dealing with the guard posed him a quandary. The expedient thing for him to do was drain them and use their essence to strengthen them the way he'd done accidentally with Bardic. He couldn't tell if they had enough essence to get his reserve to crack, now that it was so much deeper than with Bardic, but even if it could help, he di they didn't deserve that. Maybe if they'd been stronger, Tips could have convinced himself they were complicit in many of the horrible things the Guild did. But how much could they have seen as nearly passed their Epsilon test? As they, as they were, by the feel of their essence. He used darkness to ensure they'd remain unconscious while he put his armor and braces on, bracers on. The reserves in them had been drained, so he refilled that. So he refilled. He refilled them. All the end places on his armor were empty. It had been too much to hope they'd miss some coins, but it was in better shape than when he'd last taken it off, so the enchantments were still working. Feeling like a proper runner, he looked at the wagon. He needed to do something about it, something that would remove any doubt he'd gotten himself out of this without help. First, the horses. Tibbs didn't want them injured in, in, in this. He wakened the metal rings, attaching the harness to the wagon, then coated his arm with earth for extra strength and pulled on the leather until they broke and freed the horse. Who, the horses who remained where they were. Didn't they realize they were free? Or were they so used to being the, tools, the guild's tools they didn't understand there was an alternative? He exploded a small flyer of fire and they fled in fear. He stepped back inside the wagon, absorbing the car option that had been left behind. The weave was still there, so it would take so he so it would take all he had, just as if he'd done it without help. He filled the wagon with water, then added more and more and more. The walls held, so he made an etching, something simple, lines of essence crossing over and over again, with a filigree of Ike spaced with all just far enough apart it gave him time to finish before ouch reflexively tips tried to suffuse himself with purity as he rolled and pushed himself to all fours he glared at the three at the tree that had ended his flight and caused him pain he made purity weaves and applied them to all the places that hurt then he looked at what was left of the wagon the only piece he recognized was the seat many paces ahead of where it had been. The top ripped off, so its content had, would have spilled. It provided an explanation as to how Tibbs would have known about his armor. The guards on the other side of the road were a problem again. Unless they were cowards and had jumped, they wouldn't have landed there. He looked at where the seat was. They'd need to be in that area, but he couldn't simply carry them there. The explosion would have done that. He hoped, that, he hoped this wouldn't hurt them too much. He made the etching out of hair, out of air under them, and directed, and directed toward the wagon seat. Then let it explode. He winced as they both landed badly. Then checked that they had survived. Broken bones, but no leaking essence. Would the guild believe that Tibbs had let them live? They'd have to, because he wasn't killing them. He studied them. Would they believe this wasn't a ruse to hide? They had helped him escape. 
Again, they'd have to believe what they wanted. Hopefully, his friends had been smart enough not to reveal who they were. He should have asked how they had subdued them, but it was too late now. Tibbs looked sunrise ward and considered Kamdar's word. There was help in that direction, but all he'd bring to them was as thanks would be the Gil's wrath. He turned sunset ward and started walking, weaving darkness over and over, over and within the brand. Until he was certain this worked, the best he could do was avoid everyone. And thus ends Breaking Step, as well as Arc 1 in the Dungeon Runner series, Tibbs of, the, Tibbs of Craggle Rock. Tibbs' story will continue in Steppenwild, for his book in the second arc of the series, Tibbs of the Wilds. And this concludes Breaking Step. If you have enjoyed this, please leave a like. If you want to know when the next book will be, will start, will be up, subscribe, hit the bell. If you want to read this book, it is up on Royal Road. If you want to read ahead of it, I will be posting the first draft of Stepping Wild, starting not too long from when this will be posted, or actually might have already started by then, uh, on my Patreon. And if you want to listen to these uh, Read and Corrects live, they're every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time, on Twitch. The links are in the notes, and with that, I shall wish you a good day.